I'm Dr. Anthony Priscilla. Today we're going to show you a rotator cuff repair. A patient is a 56-year-old woman who I first saw two years ago with shoulder pain. At that time we sent her to physical therapy and she did well. She came back two years later and we sent her for an MRI. The MRI showed that she had a rotator cuff tear and today we're going to perform a rotator cuff repair. The first thing we'll do is make an incision in the back of the shoulder, very small, about a centimeter, a half an inch long, and we'll put a camera into the shoulder joint. We'll fill the shoulder joint with water and take a little bit of a look around. The first thing we see is the socket of the ball and socket joint and then we'll look over at the ball. So there's the ball and there's the socket. Now we're going to put a separate opening into the shoulder through the front. So we'll make a second incision in the front of the shoulder and through it we'll put a small tube called a cannula. And now we have an opening or way to get into the front of the shoulder joint. And we'll just clean things up just a little bit to start. Now we're going to look over to where the rotator cuff attachment is. And you can see that it looks very frayed. The spinal needle. So we'll put a spinal needle, just a needle into that area to mark it. And you can see that that's very abnormal looking. And that's where the tear in the rotator cuff is. And now we're just going to clean that area up. We're taking out torn, frayed tissue. And we'll leave behind a small defect or hole. That hole is the tear itself. So all I'm doing is cleaning up the tear that was already there. So just to demonstrate what the tear is, if I put a probe here, and push it in. This is normal tendon tissue, this white structure here. Now there's a defect or a hole. This tissue belongs stuck down here. So tendon, bone, that tendon belongs stuck to that bone. And the way that we're going to attach it is with an anchor. So I'll take a single 5-5 suture anchor. And I'll take the shaver again. For the tendon to heal correctly, there needs to be a bleeding bone surface. So we're going to clean this up even more and allow a little bleeding to develop. So now we've got a little bit of bleeding there and raw bone surfaces for the tendon to heal to. Now we'll use a device called an awl to make a hole in the bone. Perfect. I just gently tap a hole into the bone and now into that hole we'll put an anchor which is basically an eyelet screw. So that's going to go through this small incision I made into her shoulder. Now that anchor is going into the hole I have made and we're just going to screw it in. And so when I take the inserter off, what you'll see is that there are stitches attached to that screw. And I can reach in and just show you that. Now I've got these stitches and they're attached to the bone. They're not coming out. I can pull as hard as I want and we've got an anchor in the bone attached to these stitches, which we are then going to use to tie this torn tendon tissue down like that. We've been looking up at the torn edge of the rotator cuff. We're going to switch our view now to look from the top down. Now we are in the part of the shoulder above the rotator cuff. We're not in the joint anymore. We're looking at the tear from on top. I'm going to grab these stitches and pull them out a different way. And I'm going to make a separate incision and put the cannula in a different direction. So now I can pass these stitches or sutures through the torn edge of the tendon. Just to show you that tear from a different direction, I'm going to reach in and pick it up. This is the torn edge of the tendon. That's the hole in the tendon and we want to pull that back down to there. To do that, we're going to pass each of these stitches individually 
through the edge of the tendon here, 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 and here, and then tie them. This device passes the stitches through the tendon and has a needle that pushes the stitch through the tendon. It's called a suture passer. So we're going to grab the first stitch, pull it through our cannula, and then we're going to load it in the suture passing device, push it back down into the shoulder, and then grab a piece of the torn tendon, and this will pass the suture through. And now it's through the tendon. Now we'll grab it and pull it out. And I'll make a separate small incision to hold on to it until we need it to, to tie it together. And now we're going to pass its other end through the tendon. And now we'll grab the other blue, pull it out through the cannula, and repeat the process. And you'll see the needle come through with the stitch attached. And we can grab it and pull it through. We'll park it, just leave it somewhere to wait till it's time to tie it, and then we'll go and continue the process two more times. So we're doing this a total of four times, four stitches through the torn edge of the tendon to repair it. Now we've got three stitches through, one, two, three, and we only need one more. We're going to park this one as well, and then we'll grab the last one to pass it through. We're going to reach down through there and pass the last stitch. Now I'll grab it and pull it out. We'll pull out its mate, the other end of that particular stitch, so now we've got two. And now we'll tie a knot outside the body. So you'll see my hands here. I've got the two sutures and I'm going to tie a knot here. We'll use this knot pusher to slide that onto the tendon. And now I've got a knot outside the body. And push it down onto the tendon. And you can see it going down onto the tendon and pushing it down to the bone. Now we'll tighten that knot up, lock it, add an additional half knot for security. You can see that extra half knot coming down onto it just to reinforce the knot that we already tied. And then I will cut one of these two stitches, but save the other one. We'll take the one that we did not cut and we'll park it in the front of the shoulder and now we'll go gently over to our other two stitches grab them and repeat the process and again I will put the knot pusher on one strand of the suture hold it there and now I'm going to tie a knot outside the body four times three now I'm going to use this pusher to push the knot down onto the tendon. And you can see how it indents the tissue and that's how it, I know that it's tight enough. And then again, one additional security knot to help lock it in place so it doesn't slide back out. You can see that here. There's the half hitch that we're using for security. We have two nice tight knots and we'll cut one of the two strands of suture and leave the other one. Now we've got two free ends of stitch here and what we're going to do is pass them out to the side to create a double row. So just like if you look at your jeans, there's two layers of stitches. We're going to do the same thing when we repair this tendon and create a double row repair. So I'm actually passing the two stitches through an additional anchor, just like the first anchor that you saw. And we'll use the second anchor to reinforce our repair. Nice and gentle, put it just out here. And you'll see it come down, it's got a metal tip. We'll tighten up these two stitches and this is going to reinforce our repair 
and create a second row. And I'm going to knock it in with very gently with a mallet. So that's going to come down. You'll see the anchor come down. And now we'll screw this in. And all this is doing is reinforcing and augmenting our original repair. We'll take the inserter out. And now you've got those two stitches there that we'll need to cut short. And at this point, we're done with the rotator cuff repair. There's no more hole in the tendon. It's all tied down and pushed down against the bone. So I'm going to come down to this position. But still, we need to make sure there aren't any bone spurs, burner, that might push or rub against the tendon. And to do that, we're going to clear this stuff off of the bone up here. This is called the acromion. And this is where many patients, especially in their 50s and 60s, will develop bone spurs. So up here is bone. I'm just clearing some of the soft tissue away from that bone so we can see it and remove any spurs that may have formed and that might potentially rub against our repair irritate it or even in a worst case scenario re-tear it. So right now I am just cleaning that soft tissue off and she really doesn't have a large spur but if I look at it this way you can see that it does seem to point down a little bit and just to be on the safe side we're going to use a burr to remove that and we're going to just Scrape this off a little bit so that it's not going to push down against our repair, which is over here. Her spur is not too bad. Some patients have very large spurs that require a lot of bone to be removed. But really, she doesn't have much of a spur. And we're only doing this to be on the safe side. And at this point, we are done with the repair. We've removed any potential spur. There's lots of space between the bone up here called the acromion and our repaired rotator cuff down here so that this will not rub up against that.